morning, friends. This is Pastor Lori coming to you this um, second Friday in December as we are in the middle of Advent. And this week we will be looking at peace and what Christ's peace has for us this Advent. How we can be present with peace even in the middle of lives that aren't always quiet and that sometimes have a little chaos that sometimes are a little windy like it is this morning the gift of Christ's peace reminds us that we can have serenity even in the middle of situations that aren't peaceful because peace sometimes we think it means the absence of conflict and while sometimes that is the case that's not always what it means. We can find peace as an ever-present gift that we can open anytime. And one of the ways we do that is simply by stopping in the middle of our busy, busy lives or in the middle of whatever, maybe it's not physical busyness, maybe it's mental busyness that we're dealing with. Um, maybe it's a change of scenery from the things that are parts of our daily routine. But when we stop and we breathe in deeply, maybe we notice our breathing. Maybe we notice the things in our surroundings. We can trust that we're never alone, that God is there with us in those spots. That as we notice how our bodies are feeling, where there may be an ache or a pain or um, something that just doesn't feel quite right, that God is there with us in that place. As we notice what is running through our minds, um, sometimes we'd like to think that we can focus solely on one thing, and some of us are much better at that than others. Some of us struggle to not be kind of like a pinball machine, that little ball just of our minds just bouncing everywhere. We can notice those things. We can simply Instead of beating ourselves up or thinking, oh, I shouldn't be thinking about the sound of that truck, I can hear a few blocks over. Instead, we simply notice it. We let it be what is. Maybe we notice the quiet that comes afterwards. And one of the gifts of peace we can also give is to be present for others who may feel alone. I think most of us have had times in our life where we've felt alone, and hopefully we have experienced what that gift looks like when someone else is there with us in that loneliness. Christ's peace does that. It's a comfort. It's a presence through the Holy Spirit. Peace also, as we're in the season of Advent, it's preparing the way for a new start for a clear path forward, and usually that path is not as clear as we would like. The good news that we celebrate each Advent is that the Holy One is always making a way for new beginnings, is always making a way for something new going forward, no matter what, no matter what's going on in our lives. And in that we can find peace, even when we don't feel peaceful, even when it seems like it is raining one troublesome situation after another. We know it's not always that intense. There are times it quiets down. And we can focus on being a presence for those other folks in our lives who maybe need that little bit of quiet and presence. And thinking about our decorations, I'm out here by our church nativity today. Maybe that's one of the reasons we put up some of the decorations. Oh, and we're going to get our bells now. Isn't that fun? So we're going to pause for a second. Okay. Just that pause, that reminder, we're not alone, right? But sometimes our decorations are reminders of the fact that there's something more at work in the world. Um, the lights that twinkle so brightly when it gets dark at 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, that may be one of the reasons we love our candle decorations, the lights on our trees, is they bring that little bit of, last week we talked about hope. They bring that hope. They bring that peace. 
and the story of Jesus actually ends and begins both with peace. I don't know if you've ever thought about it that way. I'm not sure I had until I was reading a devotion this morning. Um, this is a piece by Kate Bowler, and she's just reflecting that the angels proclaim peace to Mary, the mother of Jesus. The angels proclaim peace to the shepherds. And on his resurrection, Jesus proclaims peace to his disciples after he had been through the great pain and torture of his death. The peace of Christ, it's not like the peace we might anticipate when we get up in the morning and think, oh, I hope I have a peaceful day. Instead, it's peace that can come even in, even in the middle of the most unusual situations. And that's one of the reasons every week we practice passing the peace at church. And it's more than just saying hello. It is saying hello. It is greeting those around us. But at its best, it is also recognizing that we have experienced the peace of Christ in some way. And so we want to turn and share that with someone else. Now, this Sunday will be a little different. We'll have our children's Christmas musical. Um, so that will be in the spot of the sermon. Some of the rest of the service will look the same. We won't do communion because the stage will be set up up front. But we will still have a response. And part of our response will include passing the peace. Turning to those around us to say, here is the peace of Christ, please been important to me. Please take it and then pass it on to the next person. A gift that shares and goes on no matter who it is. So in these days ahead, where might you offer peace to yourself? And where might you offer peace to others? It doesn't have to be anything large. It can be a small action. It doesn't have to be huge. It, you might even feel like it doesn't make a difference. But peace, in however it comes, does impact our world. And I want to share as we close today just a couple of blessings from this wonderful little book. It's called Ordinary Blessings for the Christmas Season. And the author has done um, Meta Herrick Carlson. She's done a delightful job of capturing some of the day-to-day -day aspects of the Christmas season and just writing short blessings for them. And the two I want to share today, one is talking about our decorations that we have. And she simply writes, evergreen, candlelight, and crèche come out of storage, dusty remnants polish clean, and the space awakens with simple symbols of what can't wait the God who flourishes, who shines in the darkness, who makes a home among us, declaring our ordinary good enough all over again. And each year we find in that, right? The hope, the peace, the joy, the love, those little glimpses. And then this one is just fun. This is for the children's Christmas program. And so I had to share it with you since we'll be enjoying that this Sunday. Maybe as you hear this, you'll think of times maybe that you, maybe when you were in the children's Christmas program, or your children, or your nieces, your friends. This story has been told so many ways, by Matthew and Luke, by children and choirs, with flubs and forgotten lines that amplify what is gorgeous and uncontainable about God getting so close to our mortality, to our trying and failing, and trying some more. There is room in the story for the big yawns, for the patina of musty costume accessories, and little ones singing so softly you can only hear the choir director and a pin drop. Watch Mary sneer at Joseph and wonder about everything we cannot know for sure, and give thanks for their little bodies, learning to hold the story, to know that love is here. So friends, as you go into these days ahead, go with the hope of peace and know that peace will sometimes come in unexpected ways in the middle of times you don't expect. We'll hope to see you on Sunday. We'll be streaming the service online if you're not able to make it in person. Either way, we hope you will worship with us on this second Sunday of Advent. Take care, friends.